welcome back to our fall updates for the year 2021. We are your host. I am Ranger Alyssa. And I'm Ranger Madison. And each week we are going to give you a peak check in the park. We're going to give you some tips for visiting, share some fall photos that our rangers have been taking in the park, and then we're going to follow all of that up with a special guest. So our peak check this week is green because we're still in the middle of September. It's not quite fall yet. Uh, we haven't seen uh, little glimpses of color up in mm -hmm. the park to experience a little bit of fall um, just before the fall equinox. So our days are getting shorter and the nights are getting colder. And it's important to remember that up on the park, it is 10 degrees colder. So in the valley, when it's been 50 degrees at night, especially last week, it's actually 40 degrees at night up on the park. So that's why you're seeing color up in the higher elevations. Um, we have been recording some pictures of some Virginia creeper that you can see usually creeping up trunks or on the rock walls. Uh, we've seen some sumac changing some color. It's like mm -hmm. this ombre. It's really cool because it starts like green and then moves down like orange. And then you can kind of see right out on the tips of its leaves. It's really beautiful. We've had some red maple trees that we've seen change color just a little bit. And the dogwoods are out there for you all to see. So that's kind of our peak check for this week. Each week we will give you a peak check just to make sure that you guys are staying up to date with what's going on in the park. We don't want you to miss anything. We have a couple tips for you guys when you're planning on coming up to see us this fall season. Number one, use the website. As you can imagine, we get a lot of phone calls this time of year and the website is actually a really good resource. Mm -hmm. Pretty much anything that you could want to know about coming and seeing the park is available on our website. Another good resource is our Shenandoah National Park app. Download the offline content. That is the most important thing that I can stress to you. You will likely not have cell service up here in the park and it's a great way to have trails, mm -hmm. a map, and points of interest. We also have digital passes and all of those can be found on recreation.gov. So there are four different types of passes. You can get our Shenandoah annual pass or we have three seven day passes uh, for individual motorcycle and vehicle. And all you have to do is purchase those online and then you can either print those out or take a screenshot and then you can show those to the ranger at the entrance station and you'll just go right in. Another thing you can do to speed up your entry to the park is to use the southern entrance station. So that would be Rockfish Gap and Swift Run Gap entrance stations. They have much shorter wait lines and that's because those areas of the park aren't nearly as populated, which is a really good thing. Uh, you're going to see less people, maybe more wildlife, and you're going to see just as much flora and fauna as anything that mm -hmm. you would see in the northern. But with the seclusion, I mean, you're going to be by yourself, which is a really cool experience. So definitely use those southern entrance stations mm -hmm. if you want to get into the park as fast as you can. The southern is also where most of our wilderness is, so yes. highly recommend. Yep. We have a new way for our visitors to get involved this year, and that is by going to our Flickr site. So if you go to flickr.com slash groups slash shinfall, you are able to sign up and share your photos with everyone, with us, with visitors and friends. You are going to see different things depending on where you are in the park. It's about 100 miles long and different elevations, so it's really great to see that full mm -hmm. view, full landscape of what's going on in the park from just friends and visitors that are coming, so that's really neat. We'll pick a few of our favorites that you guys are uploading and you're going to see them every week on this segment and we are so excited about it. It'll also be a really good way for us to kind of get a feel for what you guys are experiencing mm -hmm. during this fall color season so yeah. we can see every inch of this park. So please send us your pictures. Yes. <laughs> Also, as our final segment, our special guest this week was Wendy Cass, our park biologist, and oh. Alyssa got to go and talk to her it's to so see fun. a little bit of what we're supposed to be expecting and what mm -hmm. we can be seeing this fall season and comparing it to previous fall seasons. Mm -hmm. So, take a look. Nice job on that! <laughs> so, our most popular question in the fall is, when is peak? So we have tracked down our park botanist, Wendy Cass. We are so happy you're with us today. Thank you. And she's going to help us determine when peak is. And even though it's unpredictable and we don't know when it's going to be or where it's going to be, Wendy has a few tips for maybe tracking it or kind of 
fi figuring out how it's what it's dependent on. Okay, well, yeah, let's talk about that. Everybody does always want to know when peak is going to occur because then they can plan their vacation to the park and, and hit things just right. But it is, it is difficult to know exactly when that will occur, but you can say that um, the fall leaves do change at approximately the same rate every year, and that's due primarily to the lengthening nights and the shortening days. Many plants are sensitive to the length of the dark period, and that's what triggers the leaves on the trees to start changing color because their nutrient supplies become cut off and that leads to the change of colors. But as far as when peak will occur, that also depends a lot on the conditions in the environment, such as the temperature of the days and the nights and the amount of moisture that we've been getting. And so every year is you know, a little bit different. So even though fall color typically comes in at a, a fairly predictable rate, you know, we know it'll be like in October sometime, generally speaking, when you try to determine the peak, it's gonna depend more on the moisture and the temperature. Right, so, you were just telling us that last year we had a particularly wet summer and a dry fall, whereas this year it's the reverse and we have a dry summer and a wet fall. So how does that go into all of this? Well, so last year, you might remember, it was a wonderful year for fall color. And so the conditions that make the very best color in the tree leaves, it's gonna be the warm fall days and then the cool frostless nights. And that's what we got last year after this sort of soggy summer, then it sort of opened up mm -hmm. into this beautiful fall and it, a lovely fall color season. Now this year, as we're seeing a sort of a reversal of that, we are expecting the peak to come in sometime around the third week of October. So it'll be maybe slightly later than usual, but we still have the potential to have some really nice uh, fall color this year, depending on how much moisture we get. Wow, it pays off to know someone really important in the park. They just told us when peak is. <laughs> <laughs> it's my best guess. Yeah. <laughs> so um, another question that everyone likes to know is what is going to change color first? Well, one of the first things to change color, we can see right here, this is red maple, and you can see it's aptly named red because <laughs> that's the color that the leaves turn in the fall and they're a nice bright red and you'll see them along Skyline Drive, um, even in places in the valley as well. It's a pretty widespread species. So red maples turn early. You'll also see um, Virginia creeper. It turns a nice, beautiful sort of scarlet color and it creeps just like the name implies up the trunks of trees and has five leaflets on each leaf. And then you'll also see dogwoods. Flowering dogwoods have bright red berries right now and then these dark red leaves, sort of purplish red. So you'll see those first out. How long do you anticipate the fall season lasting? Well, that's a, a good question. Um, here at Shenandoah, it's really wonderful in that we have a very long fall season. Um, it starts now in September and then it extends all the way into early November. So it's a period of about eight weeks that you can see fall color in the park. And what makes our season so long is the high diversity of tree species that we have in our park forests. They don't all change color at the same time. So you have the early turners and then ones that turn in the middle and then ones that turn later in the season. So right now we have the red maple and, and the Virginia creeper starting to turn but pretty soon you'll see the hickories turning yellow and the birch trees and basswoods. So there'll be many yellows in, in the forest. And one of the most beautiful ones in the middle of the fall season is the roadside sassafras shrubs. You see them at overlooks throughout the park and they're just beautiful, brilliant orange. Um, so we'll see those. And then later we'll see the oaks turning red and reddish brown and beautiful um, soft colors uh, at, to close out the fall season. So it's really wonderful. Oh yeah, I know, I'm so excited. <laughs> so thank you, Mindy, so much for joining us today. We learned so much from you that we can use throughout the whole fall season. All right, you're most welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, we're gonna be back with Ranger Jonathan and he's going to tell us all about the fall equinox and upcoming stargazing events. Thanks everyone and see you again next week.